Hi, I'm Bree Talbot. In this video, we are going to be going over the data proration tool that was created to assist subgrantees in prorating their data for their PMT report. So if you haven't already watched the video on data proration, please go back and do that. Um, it goes over your options for prorating, and it also talks about why we need to prorate. We want to make sure that we are accurately representing to the federal entities that the, the correct numbers, the correct data um, that supports the amount of funding that we receive. So prorating is important. Make sure you go back and watch that video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about probably the most commonly um, expected form of proration. Um, this is what we assume the majority of people will use for proration. But if you don't feel like this is going to fit your agency or um, be feasible for you, um, and you're not sure what other option to use, get with your analyst and talk to them about it and try and figure out, we'll try and help you with a with the better option for your proration method. Um, so when you open this, this tool, you're going to notice that there are only certain sections that you can access. Um, this is to hopefully make it easier for you so that formulas aren't being accidentally changed or deleted or anything like that. Um, so hopefully that'll be helpful. You'll also see down here in the corner that we've created some different tabs. So there's quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. They also have the month range up in the 1A box for you. Um, they also have all of the questions that are included on your PMT report, which is nice if you've set up your um, data tracking system to remove certain things. You can kind of catch that before you go and put it into your PMT. Um, so the first thing you'll want to do is take your original data. This could be a victim services tracking report or a CMS report or a spreadsheet, whatever method you use to record your victim served and the services that you provide, you're going to take that original data and you're going to input it into this column B right here. Um, so you'll see that I've already done that just to make it easier because nobody wants to watch me fumble through a bunch of numbers. Um, the next section you're going to want to look at is this proration section. Um, so this is kind of the meat and potatoes of this tool. It figures out your proration for you but there is some information that you're going to have to put in. So one of the ways that you can prorate is based on salary, um, based on the build amount of salary compared to the total amount of salary for an employee or multiple employees. Um, so if you are an agency that has one employee on your grant who is reporting on this, then this is pretty simple for you. You're just going to take that employee's total salary and input that into the F box, um, F3 box. So let's say your employee received $9,500 for the quarter, you're going to input that there, and then you're gonna put the amount that you build. Um, this is easily accessible on your ledger. You should be able to find both of these number, numbers pretty easily there. So say you build, you had $9,500 in total salary and you build 7,500, this will give you a proration percent of 79, and then it's applied that 79% to all of your data. Um, you'll see there are gonna be some red boxes that pop up. Um, we'll go over that in just a little bit, um, but you'll wanna pay attention to those red boxes. So let's say you're not quite as lucky and you don't just have one employee who's partially funded federally. Um, as a, as a side note, because I forgot to mention this earlier, in this build salary section, you're going to want to include all methods of funding that are included on your grant. So if you have a cash match or a an in-kind match, you're going to include that on your build salary. You're going to include the, all of the amounts that are contributed to your ROCA grant. Um, so if you had Say you were billing six thousand dollars 
federally, and then you had a $1,500 in-kind match or cash match, you're going to still put $7,500 on this build salary section. So let's say that your um, billing is not quite that simple and you have a couple of employees on your, on your grant. We're gonna look at this sample ledger here to help us. So this is nice because you've already put in these numbers here for what you wanna bill for each of your employees and it's going to calculate it here for you. So that's helpful because then you can take this 19206.45 and you can put it onto your proration tool. So we're gonna delete this. And we're gonna go 19206.45, I believe was the number. And we're gonna put that on the bill salary. And then the only thing you need to do is come over to your ledger and you're gonna take these total agency position fund amounts. This is where you want these amounts to be accurate because it will impact your proration amount if those numbers aren't accurate. But you're gonna take the total amount for the quarter for each of your employees and you're gonna just combine them. Um, you're gonna add them all up. So you'll add this line, this line, this line. And I've already added those so you guys don't have to watch me fumble around on the calculator. And that gives us 28295.41. Um, so now you'll see we have a proration percent of 68%. And it's applied that to all of our data. One thing to note is that if you have, um, say you are this agency and you have three advocates who input data into your system, but then you also have a fourth who's not federally funded, who's not being um, counted as a cash match or an in-kind match on here, you're going to want to include that fourth person in your total salary line um, unless you have a way of pulling their data out. Um, it may be easiest to just include their total salary for the quarter on there so that it prorates it out for you. Or if you have a way of pulling their, just their data out, then you can pull their data out also, whatever works best for you. But you want to look at who all is contributing to your data and make sure that their information is included and being calculated in this proration percent. Okay, so we have our proration percent. Like I said, if you don't feel like looking at salaries is going to be the most beneficial and most um, feasible way for your agency to prorate your data, get with your analyst and you guys can, you can discuss your other options and how to best prorate your data. So now we've got our proration in, but we have some red boxes. And you'll see over here under the demographic section, we have a couple of red boxes and we have a fancy little note here. It says demographic section sums will turn red if they are not equal to number three, which is the total new victims who receive services. This is due to a rounding issue and you will have to adjust to make the numbers equal. So what this means is all of your demographic sections next to this sum number, it should equal this 107. If it doesn't equal this 107, then it's, or whatever number comes up in this for you, if it doesn't equal this, then it's gonna pop up red. Um, your PMT will also kick this back. It won't let you submit it if, if the sum of these numbers is not equal to your new individual observed. So, what you're gonna do is take a look at your data and find out where it makes most sense to add or subtract an individual. So in this race and ethnicity section, we can look at our numbers and we need to add one because we're at 106, we need to be at 107. It probably doesn't make the most sense to add another, um, another individual to the black or African-American section because we only had two in that section to begin with. It wouldn't make sense to add it to any of these that have zeros because we didn't serve anybody there. It also wouldn't really make sense to add it into the not reported or not tracked section. Um, but we could add it into the Caucasian or Latino. We could add it in, or sorry, Caucasian or non-Latino. We could add it into the Latino or we could add it into the American Indian or Alaska, Alaska Native. Um, so if we do that, we're gonna just add a note in this little note section over here. 
um, so that we remember and so that when our sub recipient monitors come in to look at our data, they kind of understand what happened. Um, so we could just put in here due to grounding errors, the following was adjusted. Oops, if you can spell better than me, that's helpful. Um, so we're going to say the following was adjusted, and then you're going to say one added to American Indian, Alaska Native, race slash ethnicity. Um, and then we'll just continue from there. So then we go on to the next section. We'll look at gender identity, and we have one over in that section due to our rounding errors. Um, so we're going to want to reduce one because we have 108 and we need 107. Um, you could reduce this from your not reported section. You could also reduce it from your male or female. If you have someone in the other, you could reduce it from there, but I um, would recommend reducing it from one of these other categories since the other section is typically representative of our LGBTQ community, and we want to make sure we represent them. Um, so then you could also add into your notes that one was, oops, one was uh, subtracted from not reported in gender identity. Um, then you have it noted in there and all your numbers will jive. You'll just have to go when you actually report this and make sure that instead of putting a 10 in this, you put a nine. And instead of putting a seven in here, you put an eight. Um, and then it'll, it'll all submit correctly. So the next section we're gonna look at is your types of victimizations. This is the only other section that goes off of your, your answers up here. So your types of victimizations compares to this number one number, number one section, which is the total individuals who receive services. So when you input your victimizations, the system's automatically going to check to make sure that you have equal to or more than the amount that you put in for your total individuals who receive services. So it's going to check and make sure that we have more than 152 victimizations input in this example. So if we come down here and we looked at our victimizations, types of victimizations, then we're awesome. We're great. We have 199 in that section. Um, this is an awesome little note right here too, but this section will turn red. So let's say that for some reason, I forgot to put in my domestic violence. I had a, a, a mistake moment and I accidentally put zero in there. So this is going to pop up red and it's going to say, hey, you don't have enough victimizations for the number of victims that you have right here. Um, there may be a rounding issue here also. Um, I would go back and double check your numbers, make sure your original data numbers in this column are all correct. Um, but if it's off by a couple, then it's probably just a rounding issue and you'll need to adjust. You'll need to either add some to certain columns or take some out. Uh, or certain victimizations or takes them out. And then you'll just want to note that up here in your notes section. But we're good with that 93 in there, um, giving us 199. And then you'll see down here through the rest of this that all of your other data has been prorated. So you'll be able to just put this directly into the system. If you have certain things like, um, like maybe you have contracted fees for um, therapists, say you had five individual counseling sessions, and all of those counseling sessions were funded by VOCA, and you know they were, you could include all five of those sessions in there. Um, just make a note of it so that you remember. I recommend always making notes so that you remember, but um, you can go through here, and you can input all of your data into your PMT, and you shouldn't have any issues. Um, but like I said, just be aware of the rounding errors that can happen. If you have questions after this video, contact your analyst um, and they can help you out with specific issues. But hopefully this is helpful and hopefully this tool will be helpful in the process of prorating your data.